Angular's HTTP client is one of the most powerful parts of the platform, but it's also one of the easiest things to power up. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and today on Demos with Angular, we're going to be taking a look at three operators that are designed to be applied to the HTTP observable that comes back from the HTTP client. Now, within each of these operators, I've tried to bundle some of the most common challenges that developers face, such as caching data to local storage so that it works offline, such as keeping alive and pulling an endpoint, and doing more advanced things like exponential back off. Let's take a look. All right, so today, as always, we are going to get started with a blank ng-new project from the Angular CLI. Let's just go ahead and get an IDE open here and take a look. This should all look very familiar from all of my other demos. And the other thing we want to do is we want to get an HTTP server going so we can see what's going on with this project. So before we can do anything really interesting with this project, we actually need to set it up to be having a standard HTTP request. And so I'm going to do a demo that I've done a bunch of times. So I'm going to replace all of the template content with a simple ng4. And this ng4 is going to iterate through a list of repositories uh, that we're going to fetch from GitHub. And for every repository, we're going to show the name and the description. So now that we've got our template set up, let's go ahead and inject the HTTP client module. So we're going to get that from at angular slash common slash HTTP. And we'll now import that to make sure we have all the right providers. And now in our uh, component.ts file, we're going to create a constructor and use the dependency injection system to actually get a handle on that HTTP client. And then I will be using the same request I always make. So I'll just make, say, this.repos equals uh, HTTP.get. And then I'm going to ignore the typing system, so I'm just going to give it an any for now. Uh, and then the path, we're going to use just the standard GitHub URL, which I think is api.github.com slash, uh, slash search slash repositories question mark q equals angular. So we're searching the GitHub repositories for anything that matches angular. Uh, so if we take a look at this URL, we can actually see it's a JSON blob here with an items property, and that's the array we actually care about. And so even off the bat here, we need to be piping our uh, initial observable so that we can change the shape of the data that our template gets. So we'll just use a map operator, and you need to import this map operator from uh, the RxJS project. And then what we're going to do is we're going to map this through from the uh, the data, the results that we get back into the items property of that result set. So if we take a look, I think there's a small bug here. Um, I think I did the import wrong because we're, we're actually pulling in map from a place that doesn't exist. Uh, so if we take a look up at our import on line three, I was supposed to import from RxJS slash operators. Uh, that's where all of the RxJS operators are stored. And it looks like everything's working now. All right, so we have a basic application. We're making HTTP calls. All this is wonderful. And now I'm going to add a new package that I actually created called HTTP operators. This is a very, very small package. Uh, all it has is uh, today it has three operators that you can use that really try to upgrade your HTTP requests. Uh, so what I've done is I've tried to bottle in a lot of useful functionality out of the box. So let's import this so you can import from HTTP operators and you can take a look at what we've got under the hood. So we've got three operators. We've got keep fresh, uh, something called share and cache, and a retry exponential back off. And I'll, I'll walk through what each of these does and kind of how you use them. Um, so what we can do is we're going to take a pipe from any HTTP request. Uh, theoretically, this could work with a non HTTP request, but um, these were all designed with HTTP requests in mind. And the first one I'm going to show is one that I've actually done another video on, um, which is using localhost to cache uh, data from HTTP requests. So previously I had a subscription or I had a tap, um, and then I had you kind of redefine those things. I've packaged all of that into a single call where you just provide a key now. So if we take a look at that key, we're going to see all of that data is cached exactly. So you just call the share and cache operator and you tell it where you want to store it. Uh, and let's take a look at the definition. Um, 
actually let's jump all the way to GitHub. So if you're curious as to how any of these work, you can just go to github.com slash Stephen Fluin slash HTTP slash operators. And then uh, in the operators folder, you can see all of the um, code. These are all really, really simple operators. They're designed to both uh, kind of group up some very common functionality, but also to make it easy to understand how an observable works. So let's just zoom in here. Um, we take in a key and then a, we use a source observable. This is how you define an operator. We then look in local storage to see if it has that key. We pipe the results and then we uh, tap in order to store future results. Now the next operator I want to touch on is called keep fresh. And so uh, keep fresh takes an interval. So this is in milliseconds. So let's say if we want a hundred millisecond interval, um, we can just take a hundred times a thousand. Uh, and for demo purposes, I'm just going to say every 10 seconds. And then what you'll see if we look at the network tab is that now uh, when we load, we get an initial request for repositories uh, Q equals Angular. But every 10 seconds now, the application is going to make another HTTP request, and it's going to automatically stream all of those results into my template. And so the, the magic here is that you are using a, a single line of code in order to automatically pull a backend to keep your data as fresh as possible. And I, I think this is kind of a magic thing because oftentimes people think of uh, HTTP as a single result, but uh, with a single operator, you can make it uh, use polling to get all of the results out. The last thing I want to show is this retry exponential backoff where you give it a number of max tries and a uh, initial timeout. And what happens is we will exponentially increase that timeout uh, every time you make a request. So if I modify the URL here to something like ZAPI, oh, uh, those requests seem to be coming back successfully. So let's actually go ahead and swap ZAPI out for something that I know doesn't exist. So uh, let's do something like example.com here. And so what what it's doing under the hood is it's going to, every time a the kind of source observable that HTTP request fails, it's going to retry. Uh, first, it's going to wait a thousand milliseconds, and then it's going to exponentially increase that over time. And we have to get rid of our keep alive, otherwise they'll start fighting. Um, and so we see after a second, it tries again, and then after two seconds, it tries again, and so on. So it just keeps growing like that so that you're not hammering the back end um, or you're not trying to use the user's data connection if they are in a uh, maybe a not a great internet connection zone. And so that was pretty much it. So with these kind of three very simple commands, we now have um, a local storage caching, we've got a way to long pull HTTP requests, and we have a way to be a little bit more sensitive to the network. That's all for this video. Hope to see you in the next one.